Hello, women of the portal. It's Carla. And I'm uh, coming on for a few minutes because I've, I've been, there's been something banging around in my head around talking about Lilith. I did um, a live stream last week, I think it was, of Lilith soul level integrity. And then uh, my friend, astrologer, Amanda Painter, was she and I were discussing Lilith, the asteroid Lilith, uh, who was opposite Vesta at the time of the full moon. So she brought up some interesting points about that and asteroid Lilith is really active in the full moon, the new moon chart, which I just posted to my page. So you can go over there and look at that. Um, and there's some Anyway, I want to talk about Lilith, and I thought it might also be fun to speak about it in the context of the chart for the first day of sex after menopause. Um, the interesting thing about sex after menopause is I've rescheduled it three times, and the way that it, and each time I loved the chart just for fun. I looked at the chart to see what was active, and. And then I had to change it, and it was all about health. Not my health, but my son's health. He's, he's had some things where he's needed, uh, he's needed to be taken to procedures and appointments, and um, it fell to me. Um, I'm, he's able to get some good medical care. And when I said, all right, it's not going to be the 17th, when is it? I said, well, how about a week later? What's happening on that day? Is that the day that we're going to start sex after menopause? And I looked at the first thing I saw is v Vesta is on the midheaven. And she is the, the planet of just over into the 10th house, but she's like the highest thing in the chart along with um, Mercury and the sun. And you know I've been talking a lot about Vesta. Vesta is really connected to this current Mercury, um, Venus retrograde. Now, Venus is in the last day of her retrograde. I considered waiting until Thursday when Venus goes direct. But then I looked at the position of the moon in Leo. And the moon on Wednesday is conjunct Magdalena, feminine Christ consciousness and making a grand fire trine with Black Moon Lilith and Hecate and the Great Attractor. So when I saw that, that plus Vesta right at the top, I said, let's do it. Uh, we're, start we're starting on Wednesday. So I hope you'll be there with me. If you are a woman in menopause or anticipating menopause, like you're You've been in perimenopause so long, any period could be your last. Um, then sex after menopause is for you. And it's for you even if you are not unhappy with your sex life. Because we are going so much deeper than into our sex lives. Yes, it is about, um, we definitely are doing a lot of healing work and teaching work and coaching work around women who are not happy with sex, the way sex after menopause is going for them for any number of reasons. But the, but the beautiful thing, the women who were in it last time, at, at least one of them said, you know, my sex life wasn't that bad, but I knew it could be better. And I knew that I needed to that the way it used to be wasn't the whole story. That recognizing that she was changing and her sexuality and her relationship with her partner was changing, even if it wasn't bad. Um, so this is, this is why I'm excited about the priestess Vesta being at the top because in midlife and in moving through midlife into our crone years, and I have worked with women 
between the ages of mid 40s to mid 70s on this this content that we're doing in sex after menopause and one of my favorite was a former nun who left the order and married a former priest and she was now divorced and wanting to take her sexuality to a new level at the age of 73. Yes, I love that. So much fun to work with her. Um, so Vesta the Priestess, we are priestess, our queen, our empress, archetypes uh, in midlife and with our midlife sexuality. So Vesta is, a, is like a, she's like a hallmark right now. This this program, this version is going to go from next week through early September. So it's going to be fully in between summer solstice and autumn equinox. And that is the time where Venus and Vesta are having this, completing their big conversation that they started six months ago. So and if you haven't been following my astrology, this might be kind of like, what's she talking about? Well, um, I'm not going to go into that right now, but you can ask me about it and go to my YouTube channel and go look for the, uh, go look for the astrology readings. Um, so Vesta, this is, this is, this particular, Vesta's our ruler. This, this Sex After Menopause program is going to be ruled by Vesta and guided by Balbo. And now Balbo, I've looked, there is no astrology, uh, no, um, no asteroid or anything is named for Balbo. Um, but she's actually going to open our session on Wednesday. Um, and that's another thing. I'm going to use the Dark Goddess Tarot in uh, Sex After Menopause this time. I didn't do it last time. It never occurred to me. Maybe I might have pulled one card at the beginning or sometime. But it's like, oh, we've got some goddess archetypes to work with very directly. And Balbo said, me, me, me. Um, I am in charge of the sexy crones. You, <laughs> you. So... Um, then I saw the moon activating Magdalena and Black Moon Lilith and Hecate and the Great Attractor. That aspect is active net on Sunday at the new moon eclipse. And by Wednesday, the moon will have moved over into Leo. So she's really firing up that fire trine that I described in the Divine Feminine Astrology reading. Eris is still square, the, um, all the five planets in Capricorn and Jupiter and Pluto are moving even closer to their exact conjunction in the retrograde phase. And then this one I love, Lilith, the disowned feminine, is still conjunct the galactic center. Now, at the full moon, the galactic center and Lilith asteroid are at the exact same point, 2708. Um, Lilith has moved to 2622, so she's still retrograding. Actually, she has turned, no, she's still retrograding. Um, but she's getting ready to turn direct. She won't go too much farther into Sagittarius. Lilith is the part, our feminine aspects that we disown, that we were told from the time we emerged from our mother's womb and they saw that we had a pussy instead of a dick, to be blunt. They said, oh, you're not as good as a man. Even if they didn't know it, they were in a bed. You're not as good as a man. You are going to be subject to a man. A man is going to run things and you are going to help him. And you are going to spend your life energy trying to attract him and bearing his children and cleaning up after him. 
and oh yes, you know, we're modern, so you can have a career, but you're going to have terms because the feminine is not enough. So that is activated by the galactic center, still activated by the new moon and the eclipse fourth and moving through a solid cycle, at least until the next eclipse. Um, it's really setting the tone for the eclipse energy. And that's why it's so beautiful that I am doing this program now. Life and moving into our cronehood, we have had it with not being enough. Our disowned shit is coming up in our faces and it is time to heal it. And it's time to discern, is it even ours? In Sex After Menopause, we do a ton of ancestral healing. We do womb clearing, which clears out your ancestor's gunk, your old lover's gunk, your ex-husband's gunk, the, uh, all of this disowned stuff. We do very direct and specific and potent and life-changing healing on that because you are creating a new sexuality, a new uh, divine feminine self, erotic, a new level of orgasm is new, even though you might be feeling a little old. <laughs> you are this new priestess archetype of the midlife elder woman, the crone, the empress, the queen. It, um, cronehood has stages, you know, mid to late 40s, early 50s, up through uh, the Chiron return around 50, 52, queen. The 50s up to second Saturn return, maybe a little beyond, empress. And then 60, certainly by 65, you are full-blown crone. And it can be the best time of your life. So we're going to meet you where you are with all of these avatars of support. We've got Mars energy. We've got Nessus. We've got Algol connected to uh, the demonized goddess is connecting to Mars and Saturn, Chiroclo, Pallas Athene, Jupiter, and Pluto. It's like the demonized goddess, the divine feminine, this one here, heads will roll. She is with you as you do this work. So I am thrilled with this chart, Sex After Menopause and the work that we do together. I am thrilled with the women who are coming in and I got some, I've still got space. So I'm for you to own your power as you never have before. Um, I'll put the link in the in the comments here after we post the video, but you can also just PM me and say, how do I get in? Um, I will mention that there are pay in full bonuses. It the best. Deal. Um, and if you need to, we have a couple of payment plans. So it it can come to um, a level that is affordable. In monthly payments so you will go to the web page you will look it over you will tune in to your own body your own heart your own breath and say is this a yes for me and the answer is yes then you choose your payment plan you also have the opportunity to choose uh, whether to work with me privately as well so you can uh, there are four private sessions available um, for the, for an extra price, but you also have payment plans for that. And the women who have chosen to work with me privately uh, as an adjunct to the course have been really happy with that choice. Um, so check in. Do you work privately uh, with what's going on in your life? Um, can superpower the whole program. So go to the webpage. Um, or just private message me 
And now let me get back, let me kind of close with following up on the Lily story because I got, I got off onto the, um, the astrology chart. At the time, at the time of the full moon, Lilith was opposite Vesta and Vesta was in the first degree of uh, Cancer where the moon and the sun are now and Lilith was in the first degree of Capricorn. So that Aries point, that cardinal sign was lit up, which meant the whole chart felt it. So what we're seeing is Vesta, what, what Amanda said is that what's going on with society considering trying to be over militarized police forces, municipal police forces in, um, in our country. Um, it seems like the feminine is coming forward and saying, it's time for us to rebuild our structures. Uh, Capricorn is all about structure, law and order, institutions. Let's rebuild our institutions. And so she's coming and saying, I'm not going to disown the feminine part and let's figure out how we can transform the world and do away with, reshape, re, 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 revolute, <laughs> evolve and, re, and have a revolution around dismantling racism, dismantling excessive force as a police force, dismantling fascism, which is beginning to creep into all of our structures, corporate, religious, and government, and law enforcement. Um, so I completely agree with her assessment. I think that is an excellent ass assessment. And talking about the devotion to the feminine and devotion to our higher selves, our higher, our sense of ourselves as better than the society that we've created. We can do better. We must do better. So that was her take on Vesta and Lilith. And the take that I always have is the priestess within you is calling to the disowned feminine within you and say, come and be initiated into your priestess self embody the priestess within you. The disowned feminine within you is the disowned priestess, is the disowned queen, empress, crone, goddess. So I see, I see it as, especially at the cardinal points, to come into a structure of reclaiming your power, of healing your lineage, your ancestry, and that, I believe, is a necessary first step to the world, dismantling patriarchy and bringing forth a partnership between divine masculine, divine feminine, and the, the best parts of ourselves, the potent, erotic partnership with the earth and with one another that will give birth to the new world that we're creating and that people are demanding. So Vesta doesn't mess around. Devotion and being in the temple and tending to the sacred flame may seem like mild-mannered activities, but Vesta has her dark side. She, she is very much related to Hecate, who is active now, who is walking us between the worlds. There is a shamanic aspect to Hecate and to Vesta and to Lilith, definitely. So, Vesta and Lilith are dark goddesses and all of the Liliths are active now and they all draw their power from the darkness. 
and they bring it up and inform the light with that darkness. And that is what the work of healing around your sexuality is. And that's why I do the work and that's why I start there. Wherever else you're going, into womb healing, into manifesting, into creating a business, creating money, reclaiming your powers of sex, wealth, and voice. This is the work that we do beyond this entry point of sexuality. We need our sexual channels cleared first because those wounds, those, that shame, that sense of not enough and inadequacy will shut us down every time. We can't have that anymore. That's where we start. Open the channel. Claim your... If you fit, if sex after menopause is where you belong, then let's get in there right now. Do not wait another day because it's a small group and there's just a few spaces left. And I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with whoever comes in. So, yeah, just go, go to the webpage and take a look at it. Contact me with any questions. Tomorrow, I am offline. You will still see some posts from me because I'm going to schedule them because I want you to have... I didn't know I was going into a sacred dance, uh, a vision quest dance, and... and uh, the call came and I said, all right, I'm doing it. Um, so I will be tuning in to you. I will be tuning in to Tulsa. I will be tuning in to my ancestors and what is called for from me. And you will be doing the same for yourself. And if sex after menopause is part of it, then get in there. Um, any questions, put them in the comments or private question, uh, message me. I am very grateful that you are here and I'll see you soon. Bye.